Configurations allow you to represent more than one version of a part within the same file. It allows you to do things such as independently controlling the size of certain features between configurations, assign materials to the part between configurations, or suppress and unsuppress features from the model. Suppressed is a term used in SOLIDWORKS, meaning that items or features are removed from memory and SOLIDWORKS treats them as if they don't exist. In this lesson, you will learn how to create several configurations of this bracket part. Some will adjust the spacing between holes and another will suppress the whole features entirely. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. The part you see on screen now represents like a bracket or mounting plate, and in its current state, we're going to refer to it as its full size state. This full size state includes the two smaller holes on the outside and the one large center hole. If we also look at this front on, it is also the tallest version in our configurations. As we add features to our model, they will appear on the side here, which is called the feature manager tree. At the top of this area, you'll notice different icons representing different tabs. If you need to see more, you can click on the arrows to move across, or you can simply drag the pane out so you can see more of the icons. The one in particular that we want to pay attention to in this lesson is called the Configuration Manager, which will look something like this. Clicking on it will switch to the Configuration Manager tree, and it will look something like this. And so to switch between tabs, you simply click on them. So going back to the Configuration Manager tree for now, you can also split this window into two if you want to. You can do this by moving your mouse up until it looks like a little double arrow looking icon. Click and hold and drag it down. And this way you'll end up with two tabs. And these two tabs can represent different tabs if you want to. So I could have one as the feature manager tree and I could have another as the configuration manager tree. To remove the second pane, all you need to do is wait for the splitter tool to appear again, hold down your mouse button and just drag it back up to the top. And this way we're just back to having the one pane open. For this lesson, we'll just stick to one pane and just switch between them the different tabs as we need them. To start with, make sure your configuration manager tree is activated. And in here you should see one default configuration. This default configuration always exists in any part you create in SOLIDWORKS. To add a new configuration, go to the very top configuration and right click on it and then go to add configuration. The property manager should appear and you can then use this area to name your configuration. So in the configuration name, let's name this whole spacing one. You can add additional information like descriptions or comments, but in this case, we're not going to use it. So just click on the green tick to accept the new configuration. So the new configuration whole spacing one has been created and it is currently the active configuration. You can tell this because it is the one that is in the white text or it's highlighted and the tick mark is green, whereas any other configurations will be grayed out as they're not active. Since our original configuration represents the model in its full size state, let's rename that configuration to make it easier to identify. So you can do this by either slow double clicking on that configuration or just clicking on it once and highlighting it and then pushing F2 on your keyboard, which will rename it. And we will rename this to full size. Just hitting enter or clicking away from it will accept the name change. To switch between configurations, all you need to do is double click on them. So currently our whole spacing one is activated. We can tell because of that green check mark. We want the full size to be activated. We just double click on it. And now this one is the active configuration. If we want to change back to the whole spacing one, just double click on it again. So that is how you switch between different configurations. Obviously there's no difference yet between our configurations because we haven't actually made any adjustments to it yet. So let's begin making those modifications so we can have some difference between our configurations. So double click on whole spacing one to make sure that it is the active configuration. And then we're going to go back to our feature manager design tree. So we need to change the dimension between these two holes and make it a shorter distance. One way of doing that is to go into the feature and then finding the sketch and then finding the dimensions. And so there's a little bit of a process to that, but a faster way of doing that is simply clicking on the face of the part. And by doing this, you can see some of the dimensions related to the features you see on screen. The one that we're interested in is obviously this 130 millimeters dimension, which is the spacing between those two holes. 
If we double click on this dimension, we can then edit it directly from the graphics area. So this is going to save time from having to go through sketches, trying to find dimensions related to those features you want to change. So with this pop-up window appearing to edit the dimension, we are going to change that to 115 mils. And before we click OK to accept that change, I want to show you something here. If you click on this little icon just to the right of the dimension, you can set or specify what configurations that change is going to affect. So obviously we want this 115 mils to only affect the whole spacing one configuration, which is currently the active configuration. So we could click on this configuration only and then click OK. So that means that that 115 dimension change is only going to affect the active configuration, which is the whole spacing one. And as a demonstration, we can see this by going back to the configuration manager tree and double clicking on the full size configuration. And you can see that spacing changes between the holes. So as we switch between them, there should be a difference in spacing now because we have assigned that specific dimension change to that configuration. Now let's create a couple more configurations uh, that represent the bracket with even shorter distance between the holes, along with a version with no holes. Go back to the configuration manager tree if you're not already there and repeat what we did for creating the configuration the first time. But I'm going to show you a little shortcut this time. You can copy and paste existing configurations just by going to the whole spacing one and pushing control C on your keyboard and then control V to paste. Or if you're not using shortcuts, you can just go to the edit menu and then go to copy and then paste. Again, we can rename this by just clicking on it. Uh, you're looking for the copy of whole spacing one and then pushing F2 on the keyboard and we'll change this to whole spacing two. And one more time, we're going to click on the whole spacing one, go control C, control V, find the copy of whole spacing one, click on it, F2, and we will rename this to no holes. So you should have full size, whole spacing one, whole spacing two, and no holes. And the whole spacing two and no holes are just a copy of the whole spacing one. Actually, I've made a bit of a mistake here, but this gives me an opportunity to show you how to actually delete a configuration. So the no holes should be a copy of the full size, but without the holes. And currently it is a copy of the whole spacing, one with the smaller hole spacing. So to delete a configuration that you don't want, you can just click on it to highlight it and then right click and go to delete. And we're going to make another copy just to get that no, no hole spacing again. So click on the full size this time, control C to copy, control V to paste, and you should see a copy of full size. Click on that, go to F2 to rename it and rename this one to no holes. So our list of configurations should be full size, which is going to be this wide distancing of the holes, hole spacing one, which will have a shorter spacing, hole spacing two, which is currently just a copy of hole spacing one, and no holes, which is a copy of full size. Let's activate the hole spacing two configuration by double clicking on it. And remember that you can tell that a configuration is activated because the green check mark and the other ones will just be grayed out. So go back to the feature manager design tree, double click on the face of the part so you can see the dimensions and the 115 we're going to change to 110. Before you click OK, make sure it is set to this configuration and then click OK and then go up to the top and rebuild. Then we can check that it is working by going back to our configuration man manager and double clicking on whole spacing one. And you should see a slight change because there's only a five mil distance there. And then the full size, yep. So there is a difference between each of those three configurations. Our last configuration is going to be the no holes configuration. And you might think that to hide the holes, you would have to delete the feature, but there is actually another thing in SolidWorks called suppression. What suppression will do is hide the features in a sense, but only in the configurations that we want it to be hidden in. So double click on the no holes configuration to make it the active one and go back to the feature manager design tree. The feature that we want to suppress is this cut extrude, which is these three holes. If you just click on that, you'll see a menu that pops up and you want to look for one that says suppress. So just click on that and you should see a menu pop up and you're looking for an option that says suppress. So when you see that, click on the suppress. When you do that, there should be no more holes showing in your part. 
And if we check this with our other configurations by going to the configuration manager tree and switching between our other configurations, you can see that the holes are there and that distance between the holes is reducing until we get to the no holes, which is full size, but there is no more holes showing in the part. Just like assigning certain dimensions to certain configurations, we can also do the same with suppressed and unsuppressed states. Let's do this by going through a demonstration. Activate the no holes configuration and go back to the feature manager tree and right click on our cut extrude and go to configure feature. And you should see this window pop up. If you need to, you can just click and drag this to an area that's more viewable. So this modify configurations window is showing us all our configurations and whether this feature is suppressed or not, or suppressed or unsuppressed. So you can see currently in the no holes configuration, there is a tick saying that it is suppressed, which is true. So if we wanted no holes and hole spacing one to not have any holes, you could put a tick in both of those areas and then click on apply and go to OK. And then if we go back to our configuration manager and switch between hole spacing one and no holes, you can see that the feature has been suppressed. And then if we click on hole spacing two or full size, that feature is unsuppressed. So anyway, that's a demonstration of that working. Let's fix that up by going back to our feature manager tree and right clicking on the cut extrude, going to configure feature, and then just unchecking that suppressed state for the hole spacing one and clicking OK. And then just making sure hole spacing one, yep, it's working again now. So it should only be no holes where the cutouts are suppressed. So that is the part configurations tool. And obviously it's very useful for creating multiple states of one part in the same file. Uh, this is useful for things like maybe you're doing screws or bolts or nuts or base plates like this particular item. And you can quickly create different variations of it and have it all in the same file. That way you're not having to save out multiple files of just the one thing where there's minor changes or even drastic changes between each state. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.